Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it is going to be Prince of Persia for the Sega CD. Now, Prince of Persia is actually a, a game I played a lot back in the day on a variety of platforms, uh, including the Sega CD as well as the Super Nintendo and Game Gear uh, and so forth. A uh, really fun game um, that is quite challenging if you're not used to it. It's a very methodical game uh, that requires you to play it relatively slow uh, if you're unfamiliar with it. Otherwise, you're gonna meet death a lot in this game. Uh, what's kind of interesting about the Sega CD version and a few other versions, uh, I believe like this is the same in the uh, PC Engine CD version, if not similar at the very least. Um, uh, it's got a uh, introduction sequence. Unfortunately, it's not really that great. It probably wasn't even that great when it first came out, uh, and it hasn't really aged all that well. So we're just gonna probably skip right through it. So we're just gonna skip that. You guys can check out a full long play video if you guys want to see the full cutscene. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna run through this game. Uh, it's it's probably gonna take a little less than an hour to beat it, and um, I'll be able to show you some of the ropes. If you guys are having problems with this game, you know, after watching this video, you should have a good idea of what you need to do to get through the game. We will probably die. Uh, we will probably die at least a few times. It's very easy to slip up and mess up in this game, um, but you'll just start right back out at the beginning of the level. Uh, so before we kick things off, as usual, I want to give a big shout out to my current Patreon back. We actually got a new backer last week, uh, Tony Richardson. Thank you, Tony, for your pledge, man. Really appreciate it. He actually had a pledge over on Twitch through the subscription program, decided to move it over to Patreon. So if anyone's interested in doing the same kind of thing, um, you know, links in the description box is always to Patreon. Um, also going to fly by the uh, the Super Chatters uh, from my Thursday live streams. Thank you guys for your direct patronage. Um, as well. It's much appreciated. Uh, your patronage uh, keeps me doing this as frequently as I am. If I didn't do Patreon or get these super chats as frequently as I am these days, I'd probably cut the upload rate back. You know, I'd, I'd take a break or a breather for a little while. So, uh, you guys are keeping me going. So, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, Alright, so basically hitting start uh, throws us right into the game. And uh, we are on the Sega CD, so there is a, a tiny bit of load times, but, you know, one thing that's kind of interesting about Sega CD is you hear a lot of people talking about its load times, and they're so long, and in reality, they're actually not, for the most part. Uh, you do have a little bit of a pause, but, you know, compared to cartridge games, yeah, uh, the load times are not perfect, but uh, compared to modern games, it's, it's like lightning. Lightning fast. Uh, so one thing I wanted to talk about in this game before we jump into it is that you have different speed options in this version of the game. Um, the higher is uh, slower. So there we go. Super slow. And uh, the lower is the fastest. So look at how quick it runs now. Um, for myself personally, uh, the number two setting for movement um, is the sweet spot. Kind of like so. And um, speed fight is the speed for the battles. I found that anything less than three is way too fast, and anything higher than three just moves like a slideshow. So, uh, pretty interesting stuff there. And then you've got um, you've got times as well. It tracks your times uh, for each stage, which is pretty cool. Uh, remember, the Sega CD has uh, internal storage, and uh, so it'll save your progress automatically, which is nice. And you can also save your game too. You don't have to enter passwords in this game, which is really cool. Um, unlike other versions, most other versions of Prince of Persia are password based. All right, so Prince of Persia uh, allows you to jump. Uh, the jumping is a little odd in this game. Uh, you have to press forward and B at the same time. If you, if you press B by itself, you will jump straight up, like so. Jumping straight up is used for grabbing onto ledges like that. So you can either press and hold B to jump up to a ledge and grab it, or you can press up. Uh, so here I am just holding up to do it. I prefer to hold up to do it. Pressing B to jump straight up just feels a little weird to me. Um, now, holding A will allow you to sort of uh, tiptoe your way, uh, which is going to allow you to get through spikes and things like that and get past certain traps easier. But holding down A, um, which lets you do the tiptoe, will also let you hang on the ledges, like so, and it'll allow you to um, climb down or crawl down. So in this first split here, we want to go to the left. The right is a, uh, a guard. 
and the guard will kill you if you get too close to him. Because um, you don't have a sword right now. You get a sword at the uh, uh, the halfway point of this level. So as you can see, Prince of Persia is a switch-based game. There's a lot of these floor tiles that activate uh, switches, which will open up gates. Uh, some of these switches, like this one right here, will close a gate, like so. So, uh, there's a lot of puzzle elements that's introduced, uh, to the, you know, introduced from these, uh, these switches. So there's gonna be a lot of puzzles later on in the game where you have to avoid certain tiles on the floor to not close a gate. Um, and the levels are pretty, pretty open as well. You, you've got the room to explore. Uh, you can come down here and walk around. It's not really necessary. However, there are rewards for exploring. Um, you notice that in the bottom left-hand portion of the screen, you've got, um, three, three pieces of health, basically. Three red jars. Uh, each one is a hit point. Now, you can extend those hit points by collecting these, uh, these large vials. And, uh, they will permanently extend your health. Uh, so that's where the exploration comes into play. Uh, you can find these vials throughout the course of the game, and they will increase your chances. Uh, in certain rooms, like this, if you jump up and touch the ceiling, you'll notice that uh, one of the blocks is jiggling. Um, that basically means that it can be knocked down just with a quick tap like that. You need to walk out of the way sometimes, otherwise you might take damage. So you can go around a variety of ways, like so. So, now, if we went up another way, um, oops, that's gonna make us fall. If you fall two stories, um, you will take a, uh, you will take some damage, unfortunately, so you gotta be careful about that. Um, actually, these potions right here, these are, uh, these will, uh, refill one hit point. And, um, so I really have no reason to go the top way, we're just gonna continue and go this way, over to the, uh, the first guard. So combat works by pressing A to attack, and then pressing up or B to parry. And when you parry, um, you know, you'll knock their sword back and you can do a quick counter attack. And here's a switch right here. And uh, between certain levels, you might have a little bit of a cutscene. So basically, what the you know the, how the story goes in this game is Jafar has taken over um, this palace, and he wants the princess to marry him. Um, he's taken over the Sultan's pal palace and wants the princess to marry him. He gives the princess an hour to decide on if she marries him or if she dies. If she says no, she dies. And uh, you are her lover, and uh, you're thrown in uh, the prison. And uh, you somehow break free, and you try to work your way up to the princess uh, as quickly as possible. So you are timed in this game. You only have an hour to get through the game. And uh, if you fail to get through the game in an hour... Oops! Well, that's a good uh, good way to demonstrate that. If you jump into spikes like that, you will die, uh, depending on how you land. What I was trying to do is actually jump over them, um, but I mistimed that, so that was my fault. So that was a good example. Otherwise, you guys might not have seen me actually hit the spikes in this game. I'm pretty good about avoiding them. Um, but I'll, I'll demonstrate uh, how that works in the next room, actually. There's a couple things you could do with the spikes and other traps in this game subsequently. Uh, but yeah, you are timed in this game. If uh, if you don't finish in the, uh, the allotted hour, um, you will actually get the bad ending of the game. The princess will die and, and yada, yada, yada. So you can actually tiptoe through these spikes. Uh, if you also just walk close to it like that, you'll notice that um, you won't get spiked. But if you if you just run like crazy right over it, the spikes will kill you. Another breakable block up there, we're not going to worry about it. And we're going to come over here and jump. So the jumps in this game are uh, tough to get used to. There's a lot of wind-up on the jumps. Uh, the running jumps in particular. No! Whoa! Whoa! Why did you do that? So, I think he did that because I pressed uh, diagonally up and forward. Um, this game is a little iffy in that regard. If you press diagonally up and forward, your character will jump. 
And I think that's probably a carryover of the old computer version of the game, uh, which is really unnecessary for a console version, which, with a controller that has four face buttons on it, you got three buttons and a start key, so... Um, there really was no reason for them to continue to include uh, that, that control setup in this game. Um, diagonally up and forward, and diagonals in general should not have had uh, any effect on controls in this game, but they do, so you have to be careful about that. But yeah, with the jumping and so forth, like I said, there's a lot of wind-up, and, uh, so you have to make sure you jump early, but, like, you have to make sure you press the, the button early to jump, but you still have to time it right, because you might actually jump too, too early, uh, or too, too late, and you'll fall off a ledge, or you'll jump too early, and you won't make the jump that you need to make, and, you know, there's gonna be a, a floor switch there, um, which is what I jumped over, and we're just gonna fall down here. So if you move into enemies, like so, you can actually pass them and flip sides with them. And uh, that can actually um, be beneficial because you could try to push them off a ledge, or you can try to push him, what I was trying to do is push him into that bed of spikes, which is always kind of fun to do. So you got multiple types of potions as well. These potions with the, uh, you know, the yellowish uh, tint on the... Uh, yeah, the aroma, uh, that'll actually hurt you, so you don't want to touch that. And that's probably gonna hurt us. Yeah, we're gonna take a hit, guaranteed. So the ideal thing to do here is, um... To stop up top, and then jump. Not do a running jump like I did. If you do a running jump, you just go too far, and then the guy will hit you. Uh, something to keep in mind in this game is that if, um... If an enemy hits you before you've drawn your sword... Um, you'll die instantly. It doesn't matter how much health you have. Alright, so this is going to be the exit. And as you could see, there was still a lot of the level I could have explored. Uh, so there's like a risk, I guess a risk versus reward element here where you could take more time and try to explore the dungeons, uh, you know, a little more in depth. You might get some, you know, some health extends or, or things like that, um, where you just might discover some other cool aspects of the dungeon designs, um, maybe some traps or things like that. Uh, but for me, uh, there's a few uh, life extends I'm going to get throughout the course of the game just because they're kind of right there and I don't have to go up too far out of my way. Um, one of them is actually right here on level 3. And this is a, uh, a kind of a tough one to get if you're not quite sure how to deal with uh, certain traps. And so you have to make a leap of faith over there and come over to this area. Knock this platform down, or this uh, tile down, and then come on up here. So getting those through those things is actually pretty easy, uh, especially if you're going one way like that, uh, when you're going in the direction that they're chomping, and there was our life extend. Um, going back, there's actually a special trick to go back. So what you want to do is you want to tiptoe forward, and then just tiptoe through them, like so. And if you're not like perfectly flush with them, your character will actually just tiptoe right up to the edge, like so, and then you could just tiptoe your way through all of them, which is pretty cool. So you don't want to fall down from here, you will die no matter what, guaranteed. And this switch that we just landed on is necessary for this next part. So you basically do a running jump, and then you grab by holding A, and then you, you hold up in order to uh, crawl up past that. All right, so we're gonna come over here, and uh, flipping the switch for the uh, the exit makes this skeleton come back to life. So we're gonna have to fight that skeleton and knock him off. Some pretty uh, pretty interesting, um, you know, pretty interesting gimmicks in this game. You know, you got skeletons coming back to life. You've got these chomper things that will slice you in half. You got the spikes that come out of the floors and. 
Um, there's some really interesting stuff that happens in Prince of Persia that was just very clever for the time. And it still kind of is clever today when you think about it. There's not a whole lot of games kind of like this. And I don't think I was supposed to knock him down this way, but we'll just uh, we'll try it and see what happens. I actually always knock him down to the right, so we'll see what happens here. Oh, he still appears in the same spot. That's weird. I was expecting him to fall all the way down um, past that ledge. So basically, we need to knock him over here. And... Oh, you're kidding me. Seriously, man. That's, that's not supposed to happen. Okay, well, we're screwed. Um, we're gonna have to do the level over again. Yeah, he was supposed to fall down. That's a glitch. That's not supposed to happen. Um, okay. Oh, look at that! Huh! Wow, that was interesting to catch on video. I have never seen that happen before, ever, and I, I've played this version of Prince of Persia a lot. I have never, ever seen that. Uh, that was quite interesting. So, okay, well, I'm glad he didn't go into, like, battle mode when I tried jumping through him. Um, what he normally would have done, if he was on the same flooring as you, with no gap, he would have just swiped if you didn't have your sword out, and he would have killed you instantly. That's what I was expecting to happen. So that was really odd. Kind of cool, but it kind of freaked me out there for a minute. <clears throat> so what's actually kind of interesting is, um, in the Super Nintendo version of the game, a lot of these levels were expanded upon. So in that previous level we just went through, in the Super Nintendo version of the game, the skeleton falls down further, um, into another room that has this, uh, f like, this smasher, this big block that just smashes objects into the ground. And the skeleton, the way he dies, is it isn't through falling through a hole, it's through, um, it it's through getting crushed, basically, which is really interesting. Um, you know, I found out, and I didn't know this, but... The company... Okay, so Prince of Persia was originally a computer game by Jordan Mechner. Uh, he basically, you know, designed and created the original Prince of Persia. Um, I did, I, he pretty much did it almost all himself, I think. Uh, it was one of those situations on, uh, you know, on computer platforms back in the day. It was a pretty revolutionary game, actually. He had made uh, some other games prior to that, like Karataka, um, which, which uses a similar, like, rotoscope-styled, uh, um, you know, graphic style. And Prince of Persia was pretty popular, and it ended up getting converted to a wide variety of platforms, including video game consoles. Uh, well, one of the earliest conversions was actually done by a company called Arsis, uh, which is a Japanese studio, and they ported Prince of Persia to the PC-98 computer platform in Japan. Uh, well, that version ended up being the basis for many other versions, including the Sega Mega CD, uh, the Sega CD, the PC Engine or TurboGrafx CD, etc., etc. And um, so, basically, what we're playing here is like a, a kind of um, not even really a variation, a game that is is based on the PC-98 version, including the music. The music that you hear in this is was originally in the PC-98 version, at least the compositions. Um, they were reworked and re-recorded for the Sega CD version um, for its Red Book audio. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, other versions of Prince of Persia, however, would be handled by other studios. Uh, I know that... Um, uh, Tengen and uh, US Gold would end up handling some of the other versions of the game. And I know they, they probably had different developers actually programming them, um, but they were not versions based on the Arsis PC-98 uh, original port. Um, so that would include the Sega Genesis version of Prince of Persia, uh, the Sega Game Gear, NES, and Sega Master System versions of Prince of Persia. Um, actually, I think Virgin Games published one of those. I think they published, published the NES one, at least in North America. Was it version games? I think it might have been. Um, but yeah, what's interesting is that, um, yeah, this company called Arsis did one of the original ports, which was to the PC-98 uh, computer system. And we're going to stop here for a minute. You notice that there's a mirror up there. 
Um, but Arsis would come back and actually do another port of the game, the Super Nintendo version. So Arsis basically did the, the original version that this is based on, even though they didn't program this specific version. They created the original version that many other ports were based on. Um, but then they came back and actually developed the Super Nintendo version. And so the Super Nintendo version actually has a very similar feel to the versions that were based on the Arsis original PC-98 port. Um, and as such, a lot of the level uh, layouts are, are very similar, um, yet in the Super Nintendo one, they heavily expanded on them. So like the example where I, I told you, you know, there's an extra room on level three where you had to get the skeleton crush. Uh, that was brand new added in, wasn't ever in the original computer release, uh, not even in the Arsis original PC-98 version of the game. Uh, so this, no, no, I did it again, man. Stupid controller. And it's weird. I actually beat this game twice over the weekend, and I never once did that. Never once in my entire time playing through those two runs did I do that. Press diagonally up and forward by accident. I'm going to blame this floating D-pad on the Genesis 6 button controller. It's a phenomenal controller, but for some reason, on a game like this, uh, where you have to have 100% precision, on your ups and downs and lefts and rights, not diagonals, uh, you can get uh, you, you can get screwed over basically. And I don't. It's, it's crazy that it's actually happening. I really wish there was at least an option um, to uh, to disable that. So there's actually a, an interesting little uh, gimmick here. Let's see if we can do it. So we're gonna try to run and jump over this switch. Oh no. No, no, you can't do it. Never mind. He's pretty much guaranteed to grab that. So basically what happened on the previous level is we ran through and we had to jump through that mirror that just magically appeared out of nowhere. Um, and basically that uh, caused a doppelganger to come out of us, which is a really cool gimmick. You know, again, you got like the reviving skeletons. Now you've got doppelgangers running around the palace uh, doing mischievous things. Um, so basically you open up that gate and um, he comes and takes the potion, which would have been a permanent life extent. And I don't even know if it's possible to get it or if it's just there to demonstrate that, hey, this is, uh, you know, this is something that can happen now that your doppelganger is running loose. So uh, it's it's definitely uh, it's it's fun. Uh, your your doppelganger is not really much of a threat. He's just uh, kind of a, a part of a bunch of scripted sequences throughout the game. Uh, now towards the end of the game, you do have to fight your doppelganger, but there is a uh, a fun little trick uh, that you have to use in order to get past him. You don't even really have to fight him per se. Um, so we're gonna just come up here. You could go down if you wanted to, but we have no need to. And uh, we're actually already uh, close to the. Uh, the end of the level so if you're ever not sure if there's like a falling platform you can just tap up and you'll notice that the uh, the floor jiggles so let's see if we can get over here and just knock this guy down yeah bam knockdown guaranteed and that was an example of me jumping too early so, fortunately, if you jump too early and, and you end up hitting, like, the corner of uh, the platform, uh, make sure you're holding down A, because a lot of times your character will still grab onto the ledge. So, Prince of Persia does have a lot of flexibility. Um, it does take into consideration, you know, early jumps or, or inaccurate jumps. Uh, many of these cutscenes are pretty much the same as just the princess looking at the hourglass. The hourglass is a symbol of how much time you have left. Uh, however, there are a couple of, um, you know, deliberate cutscenes. Uh, like one that's going to be coming up soon is she's going to let her, uh, her little mouse friend loose in the castle. And um, that's going to actually save you later on in the game. So here's some spikes like so. And I just jumped over them. And we're going to take it easy here. And you can kind of treat this guy as, as a boss. In the Super Nintendo version, he's, he's in the Super Nintendo version as well. Again, the Super Nintendo version was actually made by the studio that did one of the earliest computer ports of this game. Uh, and the fat guy was added in to that. 
So right here, here's your doppelganger again. You can try to run and jump over here, but he presses a switch, which keeps you from being able to get up. So you actually have to fall down here no matter what, but make sure you're still holding A, um, because you'll see in just a moment. Bam, just like that. If you're not holding A, you fall to your death. Guaranteed, 100%. So we're going to go ahead and come over here. We're actually making pretty good progress. We're already over halfway through the game. Um, the game, uh, I believe, has 12 main stages and then one, I think it's a 13th, just a boss fight, and that's it. Ooh, that was close. But uh, look at that glorious, glorious 16-bit blood. So, one of the fun things about this version is that it, it is gory a little bit at, at parts, so people that are into that sort of thing will, will enjoy this version for that reason alone. Uh, the Super Nintendo version had pretty much all the gore chopped out, so there is no gore in the Super Nintendo one. It doesn't really... you know, it's, it's still vicious in the Super Nintendo one. Like, I mean, just look at these things. Like, what would you do if you saw this right in front of you, chopping down like that? Uh, just thinking about it just kind of gives me chills. Um, but that a little bit of an extra visual touch in the Sega CD version, I, I love. It's it's so good. <laughs> and there's gonna be a little bit more blood. See, there's blood on the uh, you know the enemies as well when you kill them, and then on the ending, there's also a, a good bit of blood as well for for one slide anyway. All right, so we're gonna actually come back up and grab this. I might as well. So this level actually has a, an interesting gimmick. Ooh, actually this one uh, is going to require us to walk over some, s or jump over some switches. I think the switch right is right there, yeah. Oops. And so we basically need to time our jump. Oops, I timed it too late. Too late again. There we go. Okay, so right here you need to actually fall down, like so. In the Super Nintendo version of the game, a lot of these areas have been redesigned. Um, so for instance, you don't actually need to fall down uh, by hanging in the Super Nintendo one. Um, you need, there's like an extra little platform you can just fall down onto. Uh, what's interesting here too, in the Super Nintendo one, this, uh, this floor I'm on right now, and now this one with the spikes, this is all a single screen in the Super Nintendo version. Uh, so they also altered, like, the height of, uh, many of the rooms and, uh, in the Super Nintendo one. It's really interesting stuff, uh, seeing as this was, you know, um, based on a version that, um, was made by a company that made the Super Nintendo one. I just, I just... I had no idea that's how uh, the ports of Prince of Persia worked out. I know I'm sounding like a broken record now, um, but it just kind of blew me away when I found out about that the other night. Um, and this is going to be tough. Let's see. Okay, good. He's just going to follow us down. Now, here's a cool little trick you can do. If an enemy's ever backed up against a wall, you can get a bunch of free hits. Now, it's a little bit harder to demonstrate in this version of the game, um, it's a lot easier to do in the Super Nintendo one because enemies have a lot more health in that game. And we're gonna go ahead and just walk over here. Yeah, enemies getting back to the corners doesn't happen nearly as often in this one. Alright, so we're actually working our way towards the beginning. Here's a... Uh, Getting that uh, vial will allow us to float down safely. Now, it is possible to hang down and drop down and not die, but you will lose uh, health. So we actually need to do this as well. Flip that switch, and then here's our exit. And here's our cutscene for the little mouse.
So, you know, what's interesting is the ending and uh, the introductions of the game, actually, you know, it's it's styled, uh, it's anime style, basically. Um, but the cutscenes uh, in the gameplay itself is not. It's just, it's drawn in the same way as your, your standard uh, character sprites are. Uh, so when I was streaming this, a lot of people came in late, and they didn't see that, uh, they didn't see the intro, which was, you know, anime style. And then when the ending came up, it just kind of like blindsided them out of nowhere, because they weren't expecting, uh, an anime look. And it is super early 16-bit CD anime type of look, where it's like, there is barely any animation, the voice acting is pretty awful, and, um, it's just... It's it's interesting to see, uh, and it was interesting to see people's reactions to it when uh, it first came on screen. Because again, you know, for the whole 60 minutes you're playing the game, maybe longer, um, there are no anime cutscenes up until the the very end, the final boss fight. So this is actually a pretty simple level. Uh, it's mainly run left to right, and then go up, and then run right to left. Uh, you get a bunch of fights along the way. Um, but you're gonna eventually get trapped. Jafar is gonna come out and flip a switch. Not even flip a switch, but uh, he's basically gonna trap you between two gates. But then, uh, the access switch for one of the gates um, will be hit by that little mouse that the, uh, the princess uh, sent out. And so, assuming we don't die on our way up there, we should be there in just a little bit. Now, there's actually a trick right here you've got to know how to do, otherwise you're gonna die by that soldier, guaranteed. And you have to run over here and jump, and then hold A to grab. So coming up here, we'll give you another health refill. And we're just gonna fall down here, like so. Alright, so... Notice how you can just tap and, like, run and stop, like that. We need to stop just over the edge. Bam, just like that. Otherwise, you're dead, guaranteed, 100% of the time. Uh, that was actually pretty, pretty annoying to try to figure out on stream the other day when I was running through this. And, uh, it took me many tries to figure out exactly what I was supposed to do. Uh, you can also jump up here if you want. Like so. Oops! Not paying attention. And that's where Prince of Persia can just... You know, sneak up on you. If, if you're not paying attention, you will pay the price in this game. It is a game that requires your... your attention. Now, it is possible to jump over both those spikes as well. I'm just trying to take it a little bit safe right now. And I jumped by accident again right there, because I did diagonally up forward instead of just holding forward. So, it's definitely a version of Prince of Persia where you have to be... Not only do you have to, you know, think smart, but you also have to be accurate on your controls. Otherwise, your character starts doing things that you don't want him to do. And that can get you killed. And it's one of the most frustrating things in any kind of video game, is when you have to fight with the controls. Um, and even when you think you're doing things right, uh, even, even when you think you're pressing those buttons correctly, um, you know, the game might still do something that you don't, you don't want it to do. So you'll jump unintentionally, you'll attack unintentionally, you might duck unintentionally. Uh, and you might die from it. That's that's the frustrating part about it. So I, you know, I've been playing uh, some more modern games again that re that have you know similar things going on with the controls, uh, like Dark Souls, for instance. And um, it kind of takes me back to the uh, these old versions of Prince of Persia, the Sega CD one in particular. There we go. All right.
Hi. Such a satisfying chomp. All right, so this is pretty much it. I'm going to take it slow right here. And so we pretty much are stuck. And Jafar is going to come out. Oh no, Jafar is not going to come out. I'm thinking the Super Nintendo version. The Super Nintendo one, he actually comes out and shuts you in. I've been playing a lot of that version too. Uh, which I do actually intend on doing a Let's Play on. I'm not sure if it's going to be back to back with this one. Uh, but I do definitely want to record that Let's Play while it's still fresh in my mind. But yeah, in the Super Nintendo one, Jafar comes out and basically shuts both gates, uh, or shuts the gate, be I don't know, you get locked in basically, and then the mouse eventually comes out, flips the switch. Alright, making really good progress. We only have a few more levels left. So the next set of stages after this is, you know, the levels definitely get a little more tricky. And there's actually a fun gimmick on, uh, on this level as well. That, uh, you guys will see. You know, sort of just further adding to, uh, a lot of the cool things that happen in this game that just really catch you off guard. You know, the, the skeletons that come back to life, your doppelganger, you know, all the traps, things like that. So there's one more thing that happens that uh, just adds to that uh, mysterious feel. So in the Super Nintendo version of this game, there's a bed of spikes right here. This will shut this gate. Um, these platforms fall. There's an extra chomper below in the Super Nintendo version. So the Super Nintendo one is is uh, much more difficult as well, I would say. You know, traps are more frequent. Uh, there are more traps uh, that, you know, don't exist in, in certain parts of the original version, the Prince of Persia. So the game's difficulty is definitely beefed up. So, like, having that set of spikes there is... Uh, it, you wouldn't believe how much harder it makes just having a little little something extra um, really just makes the game so much more difficult and right, what we're gonna do here is try to just tap forward like this because I don't want to fall down below uh, but basically what that does is it permanently opens that gate on the other side the switch on the other side opens up the exit so we're gonna basically wrap our way, way around and then flip that switch for the exit Alright, so this is where um, that next gimmick starts uh, occurring.
Now you don't actually have to get that. You can you can avoid it. Um, but I went ahead and got it anyway. I wanted to show it off to you. And that's a permanent life extend. And basically what we can do is we can come down here. We're going to grab onto the ledge as we fall. And this will revert things. So in the Super Nintendo 1, this level was heavily expanded. And you end up having to play upside down much longer, which can be really frustrating. But uh, in this one, it just kind of kind of trolls with you. It's just, it kind of messes with you a bit. And we're basically just going to come straight down here, like so. And this is our last fight, and then we flip the switch and then exit. There we go. And that's that. So we're just gonna fall on here like so. And on to the next stage. Alright, so in this level, I think I want to come over here to the left. I think this is the level I'm thinking of. Yeah, and there's going to be this guard right here. We want to go ahead and take him out first. Um, that switch in the top left-hand portion of the screen is actually the exit switch. And if this guard is down here, when you flip that and you want to just drop down, the guard will kill you. So you basically want to go over to the left first, take out that guard, and then do everything else to the right. Now it is possible to actually get permanently trapped in this level. When you pause it, there is a restart option. So something to keep in mind. And so this guard up top, you can't climb up and just attack him. He'll knock you off, knock you off. So what we're gonna do is, um, let me see. I think we have to go to the other side through that gate. Yeah, there's two switches here that close that gate. There we go. There we go. And one of these is gonna probably fall down. Nope. Dead end. Yeah, so it's this one up top we have to uh, knock down. So we're gonna go ahead and just use this trick to get right here. Press up, just like so. And there we go. Now we're just gonna run straight across like this. And turn around, because the guard's going to be right there. And if we wanted to, we could try to knock the guard off. He'll die instantly if you knock him off this edge. Bam. And he makes an oh-so-satisfying balloon pop sound when he lands. <laughs> Alright, so I want to not hit that.
And I think... I think I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? Um... That upper gate is supposed to be open. That upper gate is totally not open right now. Um... Okay... Maybe I was supposed to hit that switch, um... Right in front of that other gate. Maybe that's what I did wrong. Yeah, that's... okay. I assume that switch was going to, uh, shut the gate. So I jumped over it. Okay, good. We're towards the end already now. If this was the Super Nintendo version of the game, the levels would be way more complex. Uh, which is, is cool on one hand, but if you're trying to beat the game in one sitting, it's just, it starts to wear on you big time. Uh, so while I love the Super Nintendo version of the game uh, for its longer stages and its its gorgeous graphics and, and things like that, uh, man, it can be a chore to play. It really, really can. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just... Actually, I want to jump up here real quick. I'm just curious. Okay, nothing. Alright, so there's that uh, life extend over on the left. A little tricky to get. And actually, this part, you have to do a running jump to go across. There's a bunch of falling platforms. Uh, and I think I can do it this way. Yeah. So we're gonna let this fall down. Just like so. And we're just gonna run our way to the left. grab this potion. Now, it might be possible to do a running jump, but what I do is I do this jump, and you're pretty much guaranteed to fall, but as long as you're holding the A button, uh, you will grapple on and not fall to your death. And so we need to do a running jump again, just like so. And he's dead. Okay, I think I might have messed this up, actually. I think I... might have... Mm, yeah... No, I'm still good. Okay. No, we're good. Crisis averted. Um... So yeah, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna run over here. It's gonna shut that gate. All these switches would shut the gate. Every single one. All four of them. Uh, then you go back and flip the switch. And try to run through just like that. And we're gonna do a running jump here. Oh, we're gonna die. Yep, I knew that was gonna happen. We didn't have enough health to do that. So, if you're not familiar with Prince of Persia, you can clearly see uh, how much trial and error is involved in this game. So, Prince of Persia is definitely not a game for everyone. It's a game that requires patience, you know, and you have to accept the fact that you're going to die a lot trying to figure this game out. Um, and you gotta be the kind of person that's okay with going back to checkpoints, basically, and having to do the whole level over again. Um, you know, it's definitely not a game that's for the faint of hearts, but I, I think 
I think a lot of different types of players can still appreciate the game, though. You know, especially considering when it originally came out. Um, the original computer version of Prince of Persia is super old, and it, like I said, it was kind of cutting edge when it came out. Um, very little was like Prince of Persia when it first came out. Even into, well into the 90s when, you know, later games like Out of This World and Flashback would use similar like rotoscoped styles. Um, Prince of Persia still held its own. It was just one of those games. And if you're a bit of a thinking man when, uh, you know, you're playing your video games, um, you know, I think you will definitely like Prince of Persia. There are some, uh, some interesting remakes, though. Um, I mean, obviously you've got different ports to various, you know, video game consoles from back in the day. Uh, but there was also an Xbox 360 Prince of Persia, like, classic remake, uh, which plays, uh, much faster, it's... combat's much easier, I think. Um, and I think the, uh, the grappling, um, and, and repelling and things like that is just, uh, much smoother in that game, and it's a lot harder to mess up in it. Uh, maybe we'll eventually do a Let's Play on that, I kinda wanna revisit it now. But I'm sure if I do, like, three Prince of Persia's Let's Plays back-to-back, -back, you guys will get sick of them. Alright, let's not die going back. That would be great. And that's that. Good. Alright, this is our last real level in the game, and this is where we fight our doppelganger. And then, uh, there's another boss we fight as well, and then we'll go to the 13th stage, which, uh, is where we fight Jafar. Lots of leaps of faith here on this level. And, uh, that's basically what they called them back in the day. A leap of faith is when you have to make a jump... Uh, ...off the screen, and you don't know where it goes. Um, and that, uh, that was something that... I don't know if that was something that... Uh, ...was really that common before Prince of Persia. But I remember the, the, the term being coined, or at least me, myself, first hearing it with... Uh, ...Prince of Persia. And I was too early. And that was kind of like a leap of faith situation right there as well, because while I saw a platform, you know, the whole platform going into the next screen, I didn't know they were falling platforms. And so, you know, if you've got falling platforms, you can't stop on them. You, you'll fall and you'll die. Uh, so in a way, that's kind of like a leap of faith as well. More like a run of faith. <laughs> but it's it's the same kind of concept. Like, you're not sure what's a, what's up next. But the trap forces you to, to, to press on as quickly as possible. If there wasn't a trap, you could just tiptoe your way through, and there, there wouldn't really be much faith required. You just, you know, go to the next screen. You tiptoe your way to the next screen and see what's on the next screen, and then you can think about what you have to do next. But with the leap of faith, there's no thinking. It's just doing and just hoping for the best. Oops. I, for some, for some reason, turned around and then jumped up straight. That was my fault. Now, it is possible to go up, so I have the option to go up here, and that can allow me to at least scope out what's above. 
So that doesn't really help a whole lot. Gotta jump too early again. Ooh. And you can see where, like, memorization plays a big part in this game as well. If I had that part memorized, like, there was gonna be, um... You know, some extra platforms there, I'd have some time to think and, and, and jump, run and jump. Um... I would have known that I, I didn't have to jump super early. But, uh, I don't have a lot of this game memorized, uh, anymore. I did when I was younger, but now it's... You know, a lot of this, I'm still, I'm just kind of winging it as I go. Even though I've, I've played through this twice now, on stream, um, I still don't have everything committed to memory. And that's how Prince of Persia is. It's, it's gonna take you a long time to, uh, commit things to memory. So right now, we just tap down. We basically put our sword away, and then the doppelganger is like, Oh, okay, yeah, I should do the same thing. Um, and then he runs into you, and that's that. Uh, so now this part is, uh, you kind of come here and you're like, um, hmm, what am I supposed to do? But you just walk, walk right across. And, uh, this takes us to the last part of this level, and, uh, we have to fight a boss fight here. Now the bosses in, you know, these original Prince of Persia games, they weren't really bosses per se. They, they just acted like your standard, uh, guards and soldiers and whatnot. Um, they can be a little more aggressive, but that's about it. You know, the combat is still exactly the same. It's not like the Super Nintendo game where they actually added in brand new bosses that, uh, operate differently from the irregular enemies. And we're dead. I jumped way too early. So, I mean, you can really see how, you know, just rushing through can get you killed very quickly, and that's exactly what happened. We beat the boss, but then I killed myself, because, uh, I wasn't paying attention. And see if we can just, like, get him over this way. Make the fight a little bit easier. And there he goes. Alright, just jump over like that. So, uh, you know, a boss like that, he will actually, like, counter, counter, counter you. Like, so, you'll swipe, he'll reflect, um, he'll swipe back, you'll reflect, you'll swipe, he'll reflect, it'll just be like this constant cycle. And to deal with that, I just keep, like, tapping up in attack at the same time. So basically, um, you know, your, your parry move and your attack move, just one after another, that's all I do to deal with that. And so basically, now we're gonna go fight Jafar. And I'll go ahead and let the uh, the cutscene play out on this one. It's kind of goofy. Jaffa. Ha 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 ha! You insignificant fool! So you've come this far. Very impressive. Free the princess and leave this place forever! Ha 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 ha! You have the audacity to give me orders. How amusing. Very well then, brave young hero. But first, you must fight me! I'm ready! Yeah. Yeah. So 
so this fight is basically like the previous fight. You know, he's very similar in terms of, uh, you know, his aggressiveness. And I think it might actually be possible to corner him on this fight. But, again, it's tough to demonstrate in this one because characters don't have as much health as they do in the Super Nintendo one. I mean, their Super Nintendo hit points are probably about double. And uh, so that's pretty much it. We just beat Prince of Persia on the Sega CD. Or Mega CD for those of you guys in other regions. I did it. It's all over now. My brave hero. Princess! And that's it. It's got an uh, unbelievably short ending. Um, for all the stuff you have to go through to beat this game, it's about two different screens and that's it. <laughs> oh, no three screens. Sorry. So yeah, there you have it guys, Prince of Persia on the Sega CD. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to play Prince of Persia. I think there's a lot of ways to not play Prince of Persia as well. There there are a lot of ports of this game, um, but there's a lot of them that just don't play very well for one reason or another, like the Sega Genesis game, the NES game, the Master System and Game Gear games. Uh, the combat's a little wonky in all of those. Um, but uh, the Sega Mega CD, um, I guess even the Turbo CD, the PC Engine CD, uh, as well as the Super Nintendo ones are g good versions to play uh, that feel, uh, you know, like the, the original computer game in terms of how combat operates and things like that. Um, and so if you haven't played this before, uh, you know, I might recommend checking it out. If you're, a, if you're a real collector of Sega CD games, it's not very expensive. I think it's still relatively cheap, at least not complete in box. Complete in box might be pricey, but if you just go disc only or something like that, it's probably very cheap to obtain. Um, and it's worth playing. Um, I also, again, I highly recommend the Super Nintendo version. And if you've got a PC Engine CD, uh, you know, you might want to check that one out as well. That's actually, you know, a variation on this specific version of the game, basically. The River Hill soft ones. Um, so, is it River, River Hill? Let's see. Um, Victor, blah, 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 published in North America. I don't know, it's weird. Um, but yeah, uh, check them out. Uh, if you guys think it looks interesting, check it out. And um, I'll probably be back doing the Super Nintendo version very soon. Like I said, I want to try to get that one knocked out while it's still fresh in my mind. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not really sure what else I've got planned, but, uh, obviously stay tuned for that. If you're brand new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I've got a ton of Let's Plays on my channel and a ton more to come. So, if, if this is, uh, your cup of tea, definitely click that subscribe button and stay tuned for what I've got coming up. So, for everyone else already subbed, thank you guys for your usual support. I really appreciate it, uh, as well as the patrons and the super chatters from the live stream. So, thank you guys once again as well. Um... Yeah, once again, hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy, and until the next video, um, I'll... Wait, normally I say take it easy after that. Oh well, just take it easy, guys. I'll see you in the next video. I am terrified of Jaffa. While Father has been away, Jaffa has banished the servants. Don't worry. When the Sultan returns, everything will be all right. Thank you. You're so kind. I've been very worried since Father left for his mission far away. I'm so glad that you are here. I would like you to meet Father when he returns. Yes, but I am just a wandering traveler. Your father may be angered if he sees us together and banish me along with Jaffa. <laughs> Princess, please return to your quarters at once. What do you want? Stop it! Leave me alone! Princess! Leave.
leave us alone! It is Master Jaffa's orders! What? We must arrest him! Him? He didn't do anything wrong? Master Jaffa will explain later. Please return to your private quarters. He didn't do anything wrong! Stop it! Let him go! Princess! <laughs> Young knight, methinks you are getting a little too friendly with the princess. And to reach my goals, I must get you out of the way! about my proposition. You will marry me, yes? Never. Who would want to marry you? I shall ascend to the throne of this kingdom. Your destiny is by my side. Father will never approve of that. Your father has no place here anymore. I shall rule. Come to me. Don't touch me! Ha 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 Very well then, princess. I shall give you some time to make up your mind. Either you marry me or when the last grain of sand slips through this hourglass, your time is up. I will never forgive you for this! Princess, wait for me! I will save you and crush Jaffa's ambitions forever! <laughs> <laughs> 